Samsung's Pro Video Mode allows you to have more control over how your Samsung smartphone shoots video. In this video, I'll go through the functions and give you some tips on how to get the most from the app. While we can install third-party apps like Filmic Pro and MC Pro 24 FPS to get manual control, some smartphone makers have their own version. Brands like Samsung, Sony, and LG have their own native camera apps, which allow you to set things like shutter speed, focus, and more, except for one notable exception, iPhone. The advantage of using an app native to the device is greater reliability and compatibility, but manual control is usually more complicated than having everything on auto. On the other hand, the reward for using pro video is, well, more pro-looking videos. Features will vary depending on the device you have, but the majority of this video will be relevant to anyone using Samsung's pro video mode. But that said, I'll be using a Samsung Note 20 Ultra. Pro video allows you to control the four most important settings in a camera, white balance, focus, shutter speed, and ISO. These settings are not available in auto mode because the phone software is setting these for you. Pro Video Mode is accessed in the submenu labeled More. When you first open the camera app, next to the record or shutter button, you have four options. Single take, photo, video, and more. Tap More to open up all the extra options. Now one of those options is Pro Video, so tap that and enter Pro Video Mode. All the manual controls are in this long column of buttons on the right of the screen. You can scroll this list up and down to access all the settings. At the top is the zoom button and at the very bottom is a reset button. So if you get in a mess with the settings, just hit that reset and everything will be restored. <sighs> of these four settings, I would say white balance is probably the least important to set manually and perhaps the trickiest. However, you should probably try to lock white balance before pressing record, so it doesn't change during a shot. The way to lock white balance is to tap the button with the letters WB in a circle. At first, it will be in auto, so tap auto to switch to manual, or drag your finger up and down over the area to the right to set the exact color temperature. Once you have set white balance this way, it won't move while you're shooting. Above white balance is a button labeled standard. Tapping this button opens up a set of controls which allow you to alter the color and tone of the image manually. The first setting, tint, is usually used in combination with white balance to create the color profile. If you've used an app like Filmic Pro, you might be familiar with the Kelvin tint combination. Note that this button is not available in 4K or 8K, only in 1080p. Below white balance is the focus button with two circles within the button. At the moment, it's labeled AF for autofocus, but if I tap it to open the focus control and then swipe my finger up and down to adjust focus, it switches from auto to manual. As you adjust focus, you'll notice this green edging around the objects in the frame. Uh, this isn't a glitch, this is to tell you what's in focus. The green edges indicate the in-focus edges in the frame. You can try to create a focus pull shot, although Samsung hasn't included features to help you with that, other than the live focus peaking, that is. It's certainly easier to achieve a nice smooth focus change if the phone is fixed in place somehow, like mounted on a tripod. So get the first focus position in place, hit record, and then adjust the focus slowly to the second focus point. You might want to practice this a few times before hitting record. Below focus is an overall exposure control button, a circle with a plus and minus sign inside. Tap that to adjust the exposure with one control. So this will adjust both ISO and shutter speed at the same time. When the exposure setting is zero, the camera app considers this to be perfect exposure. Meanwhile, a plus number means overexposed and minus number means underexposed. But you don't have to go with what the app says. Sometimes we want to make a creative choice to expose the frame differently to how the app sees it. 
For example, we might be filming through a window and the app wants to expose the inside of the room, but we might actually want the outside to be exposed correctly and the inside to be in shadow. Or if we're filming a subject and we want to create a look which is more about the highlights. See, the app will generally try to expose a scene to make as much visible as possible, but that might not be to your artistic taste. Below exposure control is the shutter speed button. Tap this to access manual shutter speed. Why do we need to control shutter speed manually? Well, if you've watched any of my other videos about achieving the film look, you will know the answer. But put simply, shutter speed controls the amount of motion blur in the image. And to get a nice, smooth looking video, we generally want shutter speed to be about 1 50th or 1 60th. Although there's no harm in going lower to get even more motion blur, but once you start to use faster shutter speeds, the video will look less smooth and have a harsher look to it. Having said that, there are times when a harsh look might be desirable. For example, when filming action sports and you want a more gritty look. So that's a creative choice you can make there. By adjusting shutter speed manually or by toggling auto to manual at the top, the general exposure control greys out. It's no longer accessible. But if you switch both ISO and shutter speed back to auto, the general exposure control becomes available again. Another reason you might want to set shutter speed manually is to remove strobing caused by artificial lights. You can see here that certain shutter speeds cause this strobing while others don't. As we've seen, ISO generally combines with shutter speed to set exposure. So why would we want to set ISO manually? Well, one problem with ISO being too high is you start to see more digital noise in the image. And for that reason, it's good practice to keep ISO as low as possible. Below 200 is usually good enough. 50 is the bottom setting, and if you can keep it there, all the better. Now, this is one little quirk I noticed with Pro Video Mode. If you keep the shutter speed in auto, when you adjust ISO, the shutter is adjusted at the same time to compensate. So I guess if you don't care about shutter speed, then you'd use this method just to make sure ISO is kept as low as possible. However, if you want to control shutter speed as well as ISO, then first make sure you put shutter speed into manual. And now when you adjust ISO, the shutter is locked to the speed you set. Once you have it set this way, adjusting ISO will cause the image to look darker or brighter. Note, you'll see that below the exposure control button, you now get a reading telling you if the app thinks the image is under or overexposed. Again, plus for over and minus for underexposed. But as I say, this is a creative choice. You don't need to be ruled by that. However, you can use it as a guide to give you a sense of exposure level. And this might be useful when you're filming in bright conditions and it's hard to see the screen clearly. The very last pro video mode setting allows you to set the direction of the microphones. If your device has multiple mics like the Note 20 Ultra, Omni uses both front and back microphones. Then front uses the front facing mics and rear obviously uses the rear facing ones. So if you have you or your subject talking to camera, it's probably best to set the microphone to the one facing them. And uh, let's hope that Samsung uh, allow us in promo to switch to the uh, selfie camera, because right now I can't see what I'm doing. As a comparison, this is using Omni, so I'm using both mics. To switch video resolution in pro video mode, you need to go into camera settings by tapping the cog icon in the bottom left corner. Pro video mode has its own setting separate from the regular camera mode. You can select from a list of ratios, 16 by 9 or 21 by 9 for extra widescreen. Then there's full for full HD, full high definition, and one by one to shoot square videos. There's also 8K versions for 16 by 9 and 21 by 9. If we choose 16 by 9, there's a second menu to choose frame rate and resolution. The maximum we can shoot at is ultra high definition or 4K at 60 frames per second. What you choose depends on what you want to do with the film after and the look you want. So, for example, if you choose 60 frames per second and playback at 60 frames per second, the video will have that video game look. 
it will look less like film. Some people prefer it and others hate it. But bear in mind you'll double the size of the video file shooting at 60 frames per second instead of 30 frames per second. Now most people shoot at 60 frames per second so they can use it for slow motion. Shoot 60 frames per second and play back at 30 or 24 frames per second and you should get nice slow motion. In pro video mode, you also get to choose 24 frames per second, whereas in the regular video mode, 24 frames per second is not an option. That's just about it for a kind of basic overview of the pro video mode in uh, that Samsung gives you. And I hope you find it useful. If you want to like and subscribe, please do. I much appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.